Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah and I love everything crafty and creative. Today I'd like to show you an embroidery project. On my last video I did a little sample of embroidery on this backpack and so today I'd like to do a much larger embroidery piece. I am going to embroider a backpack but you could do a jacket, a t-shirt, something for the wall, a hat, anything of your choice. I went in search of inspiration and as a red rocking bird, of course I love birds, I took my paper and pencil and sketched my design. I'm going to do a hummingbird style design and it's going to be slightly abstract and I've looked at some images and I'm just creating the image I want here. And so you feel free to do your own design or I will link mine in the description below and you can also do yours. So I did lots of different designs and then I put them together to find one that I liked and what I've done is I've cut it out and I'm just sort of seeing where it might fit on the bag and if it's the right size and you could scale it up and down then and just see if you like it. If not, you could draw it again or make it smaller or larger. And so all I'm going to do is try and transfer this image onto the bag. And because mine is a bag and I can't put any light behind it very easily, I'm going to use this as my template and I'm simply going to take a pen and draw around it. I'm using a fine line marker pen but um, because if I use one of those fadeable ones it's going to take me quite a while to embroider this so I want to make sure it stays put so I'm just using a fine line and I'm simply going to hold it in place. You could sellotape it in place, tape it in place if you need to and I'm simply going to trace around it. If you've got a better way of transferring this onto a dark fabric, a dark fit, thick fabric, then please do tell me how. I know you can do that um, prick and pounce method, but I feel this is easy for me today. So there we go, it's transferred onto there. And now to get the inner lines, all I can simply do is I could either just draw them all in again freehand or I can cut out the templates a little further like I do here and then trace all those lines onto there and so that's just the way I'm doing it. So there we go we're ready to embroider. I did feel a little nervous taking my marker pen to this brand new bag but I just went for it and I think it turned out really good. And So now on to the threads you can go online and buy a multi-pack of embroidery floss or you can do as I did and I went into store and selected the specific colours I liked and I took the bag in with me into the store and I did spend about 20 minutes looking because there are just so many as you can see here. I just selected all the ones I wanted, I went for some contrasting and complementary colours and I was happy with this selection that I chose. I'm starting with the black embroidery thread and I'm simply going to split it into three strands. Each one comes with a six strand and you just split it by pulling three and three or you can do it in twos. If you do it in two or three strands it just gives a neater finish, a much neater finish or it's a chunkier finish if you use six. Find an embroidery needle that you feel comfortable using. Larger is sometimes better but I'm going for this smaller one today so that I can get in and out of the pocket easily. For something other than a bag I'd use an embroidery hoop to keep the fabric in place. So I'm going to now begin the embroidery and I'm going to do a nice black outline stitch all around this edge. So we insert the needle from behind and my outline stitch is going to be a split stitch. So you do one stitch and then you come back up between the stitch from the back and then take another stitch like this. And I'm making my stitch length fairly short. Take your time at this beginning stage and as you go on you will get quicker and you will be able to do it a lot easier than you do at the beginning. You get used to where to slide the needle in. 
Once you get used to knowing where the needle needs to be, you can actually do a lot of the stitching from the top, like I do here. With this method also, because I've got two layers of fabric on the bag here, I can actually just go through the top layer of the fabric. So for this section here, I managed to just do the top section so you can see I started off going through both layers of fabric and then for this next bit I managed to just sew through that top layer and so you get a really nice neat finish. As I get to the beak section I want to fill in the actual beak with the black while we have the black on our needle and, so, and as we go you probably also might find it easier if you use a thimble to help get the needle through just because we've got quite a lot of embroidery to do. And so on to adding some colour in and we're going to fill in some colour. So I've got one of my blues and I'm going to fill this top section of the head. First of all I did an outline split stitch. Now I'm just going to draw in two contour directional lines to help me fill in that space and again I'm going to do an outline split stitch. To fill in the rest I'm going to use a long and short stitch and so it is exactly that. You just do long and short stitches. So next to a long stitch you'll have a short one and then on top of a long one you'll have a short one and you just want to fill in in the same directional lines. I'm going to do exactly the same now to about here with a different colour. I'm going to miss out the eye and I'm simply just going to do the outline I did there and then the long and short stitches. Once you've finished with one colour, instead of tying a knot at the back, you just go through the threads back and two until it's secured in place. So this is just securing your threads and then we snip that thread off. And now I'm going in with a different colour and I'm going to blend those long and short stitches together with this um, blue. So it's a great one for blending the long and short stitch. I'm basically just going to fill the rest of this like that. If you do get one that slightly doesn't um, pull together, just tweak it and get it through. And just take your time and enjoy the process. I was quite nervous to start this project as I wasn't quite sure how it's going to turn out. But now I've started and I can see it coming to life. I'm really quite excited to see how it's going to turn out. So please do stay with me till the end. So I've got this far, I've added my colours in, I've blended the colours in with the long and short stitch and fingers are a little bit sore now, glad I've got my thimble on and I'm just going to add in some white and do this section here in the same way again. So I've done these sections with some outlines. I did actually mean to fill this top section in fully but I added that directional line in by accident so changed the design a little and that's what it's all about. Just um, seeing how you go, fill it how you want to and now we're going to add in some little French knots to give a slight different detail into the bird. So to do a French knot we just come up from the back Take the needle and wrap the needle twice in this instance because I want a fairly small knot and take that needle back down the same hole or very close to where you came up. Keep the left hand taut and pull it down into a nice little neat French knot. Can't quite see it there, you might be able to see it in a moment and I'm just going to do a nice neat line of French knots and fill in that little gap there and keep going. They're a nice little detail and it just gives a bit of interest into the pattern there. So again keep nice and taut, nice and neat as we go and you get a nice little neat French knot. There they are. 
I love the fishbone stitch so I'm going to add that in now and this is how. I've drawn a directional line or two of them down at the centre and then we simply make little crosses as we go. Keep going lower each time and bringing that needle up. And this is the fishbone stitch and it's just going to give some extra detail and extra variation in the body of the bird. So be nice and neat as you can and align those little crosses up. Make little crosses as we go all the way down the lines that we've drawn for direction. It's really making a nice pretty pattern there and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom and then when we finish the V shape I have added in just some satin stitches in the same direction there as we go and now I've picked up one of my reds again and I'm just going to fill that top section in with some satin stitches and then again along this edge do some more of the French knots just to give a little bit more variation. The rest of the body is filled with a long and short stitch. I am just outlining the eye with a back stitch, a very short stitch so we get a nice neat even circle and then I'm going to take this same thread, a two strand thread and satin stitch all the way through the eye. For the little highlight in the eye I'll take the white and just give it a little French knot in there and then I'm just going to add some little tiny um, stitches in at, of black and white around the eye just to give some more tiny detail. And then for the wings I've gone in with that fishbone pattern again and filled those in and it, it does take quite a long time to complete it does but keep going do a little bit each day if you can and you'll come up with something beautiful and I'm absolutely I absolutely love how this has turned out I think it's so cute I'm going to get so many compliments and it's made my backpack look ever so cute and lovely and I hope you do have a go put it on the back of a jacket on a t-shirt on something for the wall just give it a go and see how it goes and please do tag me hashtag red rocking bird make and I'd love to see so please do subscribe and hit the like button and come back and see some more I'd love to see you again soon bye for now